Hello, welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is April 11th, and this is the EU US uh, edition. Uh, around the table, we have myself, Kevin Martins, Mark Waite, and Bruno Rochton joining us. Uh, for our agenda today, I've got the uh, next LTS release, which will be happening next week on the 17th, uh, the weekly release for this week, a new blog post that Chris Stern pu published uh, for Google Summer of Code and some notes on Google Summer of Code at this point in time. Uh, update for the contributor spotlight as it was published yesterday. Some notes on the version docs project. The Docker Compose update uh, that has been going on and the fixes that were implemented. Uh, some notes on the technical review uh, validation for pull requests. And then a couple topics that we started last week are documenting the pipeline libraries with Markdown and the additional permissions for the Wikidocs repository. Uh, anything else that uh, we need to put on the agenda or any other topics that we want to include. All right. So then we'll get started. And if anyone else joins, we'll welcome them as always. Uh, for the first item on the agenda, LTS 2.440.3 is set to be released next Wednesday, April 17th. Uh, the change log and upgrade guide have been uh, created and merged at this point in time. Uh, Adrian uh, pointed out a mistake earlier that one of the entries was looking at the same PR title and author that it shouldn't have been. So uh, thankfully I was able to update that and Chris and Mark approved and merged it. So thanks everyone for the help on that and getting that corrected. Um, the release candidates been available. Uh, there was an uh, oddity and uh, incorrect email sent out originally, but it's been updated. Uh, things are correct now and everything is uh, corrected in that sense. So. Uh, good to go there, and everything's looking good for the release next week. Uh, weekly 2.453 was built and delivered successfully earlier this week. So uh, everything's good there. And for the next LTS baseline, uh, the discussion's been started in the developer mailing list, but we're looking at 2.452 as the baseline. Uh, the last uh, several, if I think the rough number is 10, uh, weekly releases have been going very well without any issues or any kind of major uh, call-outs from the community. So with how positive things have been and how uh, many changes and everything we've gone on, uh, we're looking at 2.452 and it's gotten the backup that it will be, uh, it looks to be the front runner at this point. Uh, the next item on the list. So uh, this was something that had been published last week just after Doc's office hours, but uh, Chris Stern created a blog post for uh, the end of the Gen uh, Google Summer of Code application period ending. So uh, thanks to Chris for the work on this, essentially just explaining that the application period's over and now there comes the time to review uh, the applications and proposals that have been submitted. So our wonderful team of org admins and uh, mentors, leaders are in that process now. Uh, there's over 70 or so submissions to review, grade, and uh, filter through. So it'll take a little bit. They're working on that. Um, again, the application period closed back on April 2nd. Uh, so this is now the focus of Google Summer Code for the leaders. Uh, and then once the grading process has uh, been completed, uh, we'll get back to people, let them know where things stand. We'll submit the projects to Google directly after we've figured out what we want to submit. Uh, and yeah, the, and Google Summer of Code will continue on from there. Uh, is there any other insights, notes, or anything on Google Summer of Code uh, that we want to highlight, Bruno, in this? Or did that cover everything That's, at this point? Yeah, yeah, you covered everything perfectly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. Um, and again, and uh, and then, uh, so yeah, the, the grading period is happening. We'll have more information once that's completed and let everyone know what the results look like at that point. Uh, next up, so for the contributor spotlight, uh, we just published Hervé Lemire's page yesterday. Um, so thanks to Hervé for his work on that and help collaborating with us on that. Um, it's a really nice story. It uh, is a really nice picture of Jenkins as well. Hervé uh, was not necessarily a Jenkins uh, user before uh, being hired at Cloudbees. So uh, it's interesting to see the insights and the, the, the ideas that he had prior to and after working on Jenkins and how things have changed in a positive way, which is really great. Um, so yeah, so thanks again to Hervé. And then uh, after Hervé, we'll have Mark uh, and so forth from there. 
uh, we'll, I'll be checking in with Alyssa when she's uh, back from her time away to find out who else we can uh, tap on the shoulder for. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the submissions that we have already received. So we'll be looking at other contributors to see who we might, uh, who we might be able to work with on uh, also being spotlighted. Um, we're going to look at the same data and everything that we had before, uh, but potentially update the timeline that we're looking at and see what we might be able to uh, pull from that. Uh, next up is the version docs project. So this has taken a little bit of a backseat for, for the time being. Uh, the infra team is working on making sure that uh, costs are under control for cloud, uh, cloud costs are under control. Uh, so that is priority number one. Uh, as a result, uh, Chris and Vandy have been working on the version docs site uh, separately from that, just continuing to make progress on that. Uh, they've been working on the Gatsby site, making sure that everything is uh, generating properly there since uh, Things like security advisories, we want to make sure are still being produced and uh, rendered properly. So uh, just making sure things like that are taken care of. So uh, the infra team is still working on this. Uh, they have they hope to have it completed uh, sooner than later, of course, but uh, that will dictate when the version doc site can be part of the work going forward again. So um, once that's done, we'll go from there with the version doc site. I'm still reviewing things, making sure things are good to go on that front. Uh, and yeah. Um, and then, uh, Mark, if there's any uh, insight or any other details that we need to know about the AWS donations or anything like that. No? Okay. Yeah, no, so nothing, nothing I think that needs to be just, just noting that, yes, the AWS donations have been received and we're actively working to use them to be sure that we apply them so that they benefit the project. Thank you very much. Um, and then uh, Mark, just for my clarification, since it, it just popped in my head, uh, would that donation from AWS go towards reducing cloud cost coverage and, and all of that uh, part of the work that Infra is working on? Or would that be separate? Yeah, so what we're doing is we're shifting workloads from other locations into AWS in order to consume that donation. Got it, great, thank you very much. All right. Uh, next up is the Docker Compose updates. So uh, this, again, for anyone joining us now, uh, this is work that's been going on since last year with the Google Summer of Code. Uh, the project was to incorporate Docker Compose into tutorials and documentation so that we can update and have a more modern uh, process for Docker usage. So uh, Bruno has been working on that since Google Summer of Code 2023 ended, along with, um, was it Ashtosh was uh, the one helping you, Bruno? So. Uh, perfect, it was, so great. Um, but Bruno and Ashutosh have been working on this, getting this put together. Uh, Bruno has been updating the tutorials lately and has uh, looked to incorporate it into the Docker installation documentation, which is the next big step. Um, there was an issue uh, that had, that Bruno created a couple PRs to fix and they have been merged since we last met. So uh, that should resolve the issue that was at hand. Uh, time will tell for sure, but uh, yeah, any other Anything to note on Docker Compose updates? Well, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, the um, user who created the issue. Um, and I wanted also to apologize because at the very beginning of the issue, I was kind of skeptical <laughs> because um, I tested that on my machine. It's tested on the CI in a GitHub action. So I was wondering, how come this doesn't work for the end user? It may have a very old Docker version or something, but no, that was quite the contrary. It had a very recent version of Docker. I sometimes give this lecture at the local university about Docker. And one of the things I pitch is that it, Docker is supposed to solve the, it works on my machine, you know, because it's supposed to work just about everywhere. Like Java uh, compile runs and run anywhere until it doesn't work anymore. But that's the same for Docker. It works until... It doesn't work anymore. Docker Compose had um, a fix, I would say, an upgrade or something that broke the way that we were using Docker Compose. It was our fault. It was kind of an edge case, you know. So it used to work, but unfortunately, after the modification at Docker, it did not work anymore. So, yeah, it's fixed now, thanks to the users who created that. Um, and I had a look at the use 
uh, earlier today with Mark, uh, because on the repo, you have some insight. And frankly, I saw some pretty interesting um, numbers. So it looks like some people are using it, but the numbers are so flattering that I'm wondering if they are for real or if there is a glitch in the system or something. But anyhow, that just proved that some people are using it, detecting errors when there are some. So yes, that's quite a nice bonus for the Jenkins project. Awesome, thank you so much, Bruno. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Gavin. Yeah, um, and then uh, just for my knowledge, the stats and the numbers that you're referring to, are those something that are available to anyone or strictly for maintainers? Oh, I guess so. Just if you go on the quick start tutorials uh, repo in the Jenkins Docs organization, um, you should see something called insights. Yeah. Okay, it's in the, okay, the insights. Yeah, for yeah. It. So, uh, yes, in the insight, you see quite a lot of traffic. If you click on traffic, for example, we can see mm -hmm. that some people are cloning. But the yeah. numbers I was referring to, which is way too high to be accurate, is in another place. If you go back to the Quick Start Tutorials main page, mm -hmm. on the right, you have packages one, Quick Start Tutorial, Jenkins CI Tutorial. On the, yes, you're there. Yeah there just there if you click on that you will see on the right 7.69k total downloads and it was 7.51 earlier this morning and that sounds unrealistic uh, as a number at least to me <laughs> i mean that uh, that does sound like a good amount of people uh i mean there's plenty of reason why that could be true uh I won't sit here and try to analyze it, of course, but uh, having good, clean, clear instructions is always a very uh, huge benefit for anyone yeah. looking at this. Um, maybe I should uh, stop my wild true script that uh, clones and downloads repeatedly. The... No, just kidding. <laughs> but maybe someone has something like that in his attic or whatever. That's quite a high number. Anyhow, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for uh helping make that a little bit more transparent and sharing that with us. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you for my knowledge as well. Thank you. So uh, great. So uh, again, just a really nice example of Google Summer of Code projects coming to full, uh, coming full circle and how they're implemented into the project. Uh, next item on the agenda is something that I started a discussion around last week. Uh, so uh, I am a the documentation officer. I, my Focus is the documentation. Uh, I'm not a developer by trade or practice, so my technical skills have a limit to them. Uh, as a result of that, I've been looking to see what we can do to help make the review process and the and pull request uh, submission and review process uh, a little bit more smooth and a little bit more constructive for everyone involved. So uh, I discussed this again last week uh, here in the office hours and with others. Um, but the idea is that we are looking to have people help with technical review and validation for pull requests that are coming in. Uh, I'm doing my due diligence and putting every effort I can into understand as much as I can in that instance. But if I hit a wall, um, I would love. I I am just really happy to be able to say that I can. There are other people willing to help with this and review this stuff for that sort of validation, uh, where they don't need to necessarily pay to, like review the documentation part of it, just how accurate are these steps or this instruction or this content that's being submitted. Um, so again, I'm doing every last piece of work that I possibly can to make sure that uh, that is the only thing anyone else needs to worry about. Uh, I'm doing the documentation review, testing things as best I can, following instructions uh, to a point, and then uh, at that point, that's when I'm asking for help and for anyone else to have another review of it. Um, thus far, uh, I've reached out on a pull request recently that got some review and some help from Chris Stern. So thanks to Chris uh, and Zabinik for their help on that one. Uh, really appreciate that support. Uh, and so we've also updated the copy editors team to include these new folks so that uh, that review can happen. So Chris Stern has been added as part of it. Uh, Bruno has been added as part of it. Uh, I'm not, uh, Mark, has Meg uh, agreed and been made part of it or are we still discussing? 
Meg was already in copy editors, so she okay. should, if she wasn't, she'd already been approved for copy editors long ago, years ago. Okay, perfect. So great. Then, so yeah, so we've expanded the team a little bit or the group members in that sense, and it's already been proven really great. Um, so we'll continue with that. If anyone else is interested in joining up or wants to help with reviews, uh, by all means, send us a chat through Gitter, through a uh, pull request, or, it, you know, however you want to get in contact with us, let us know. We're more than happy. Uh, next up, so uh, documenting pipeline libraries with Markdown or plain text or HTML. Um, so I'll do my best to review this one. Mark, feel free to jump in or point out anything I might miss uh, misstate. Um, but uh, Marcus Winter recently submitted a pull request to update and have uh, Markdown as an option for pipeline library documentation. Um, before it was strictly just using HTML where it might not be as uh, well friendly worked. for writers. Friendly there for writers. Let's call it what it is. Yes, yeah. I can. I can use HTML markup, but boy, is it not pretty for me as a writer. Yeah, and so uh, Marcus has done the work to submit this and and do the work to make sure this works. Uh, Mark's converted his branch of the pipeline library to use the markdown, and it works really well. Um, so therefore, everything does seem to be working as intended and as suggested by Marcus. Uh, so the only thing at this point is that if we decide to include the Markdown Formatter plugin, which is how this would all work, um, it would need to be updated and added to uh, ci.jenkins.io. Um, and so that is a bigger task than what we can just dis discuss here. So um, that's something that needs to be discussed with the infra team and security. So Mark has created a help desk ticket for that uh, so that we can have that conversation in a place that makes sense and so that we can follow along and add to the discussion if anyone feels strongly one way or another. Um, but uh, we're getting this set up for um, the work and it's been introduced in uh, the infra gitter channel as well if i'm not mistaken uh, but yeah uh, so this is something that's a, it's a new proposal that we're looking at and something that we're looking to incorporate if it is agreed upon um, mark did i miss anything on that no you got it right it, okay. it's we're probably weeks away from a decision and i'm likely to make some fixes to the existing pipeline documentation because right now some of it assumes Markdown, but of course then is rendered as HTML. And when you assume Markdown and render as HTML, it looks awful. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, that'll be something we need to update. I'll be more than happy to help out with that in any way I can, since it sounds like documentation stuff. Great. Uh, and then the last item on the agenda that I had for today uh, was additional permissions for the Wikidocs repository. Um, so this is, again, something that we discussed last week. Uh, it's a team that is part of the infrastructure um, that uh, they didn't have uh, permissions for the wiki archive repository as it stood then. Um, it, this has been updated since now the wiki docs team has access to the wiki archive repository and copy editors have that same permission. So um, it's not something that we necessarily touch or work on a lot, um, but there was a case where we had a mark a plugin as deprecated and um, couldn't get the maintainer to do that. So we had to go in and uh, make it a little note for ourselves uh, to, so that everyone could see that um, from the page. Uh, I don't have the page readily available here, unfortunately, but there was, uh, I forget which plugin it was specifically. Just or, open plugins.jenkins.io and you can see it. Peg down, P-E-G-D-O-W-N. That's the one. So yeah, so this this little piece here of saying it's deprecated, um, this was something that the Wikidocs team needed to implement because the maintainer was not uh, responsive to the request. Yeah, because so. if you scroll upwards, you'll see why the last release was 12 years ago. Yep. Clear as day there, so. Um, yeah, uh, but again, that was something where uh, we updated the team members for the copy editors and the Wikidocs and docs. Team. Like there was a handful of updates to different teams and groups for the org um, that made a lot, just made a lot of sense for cleanup and just making sure things are current. So um, all kind of rolled into that. 
Um, uh, oh, and just a note, since it, I didn't put it on here, let me just add it to the bottom here. Um, uh, CDCon will be taking place next week in Seattle. Uh, and thanks to all the CDF, uh, the CD Foundation uh, and Jenkins community members, uh, the awards for both CDF and Jenkins will be announced, presented, and given out next week at CDCon. Um, so thanks again to everyone who participated, voting, attending, anything like that. Um, it means a lot. The democratic process is uh, shown to be working if people have won, so yay for that. But um, uh, the community appreciates it. We've had uh, several people nominated through for the Jenkins Awards specifically, and uh, each one of them has every uh, right to be the winner there. Um, so it's it'll be fun to see who actually is announced. But um, next week, CDCon's happening. Uh, Mark will be attending, and uh, I think I Basil is too. Yeah. So uh, really exciting. We'll have a couple of people there to represent Jenkins uh, and who better. Uh, so yeah, that, that's exciting. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put that note in there uh, once again, just to make sure that everyone's aware that's happening next week. Um, that wraps it up for the agenda that I had. Uh, since we are good on topics, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap things up a little early today. Uh, Video recording will be available 24 to 48 hours. It'll be posted on the community discourse channel as well. Uh, and until next week, take care, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you then. Bye now.